Don't swim. All kids out of the pool. What is adult swim? The Japanese claim it increases sexual potency tenfold. Adult Swim is a block of programming on Cartoon Network, uh, specifically for adults. Oh, good. It's a great mixture of the most creative, most original, edgy, funny cartoons. You can cuss in it. You can get away with things you can't normally do. You sick bastard. Is it new or is it old animation redubbed? Yes. Or no. That's basically the undercurrent of Adult Swim. What am I unleashed? Space Ghost was our first uh, attempt to program to older viewers. All within the domain of the Sea Monkey Bowl. It's your favorite 60s superhero hosting an intergalactic talk show. Face it, Space Ghost! No! You're a spaceman that choked on a muffin! That, sir, is impossible because I am allergic to muffins! Nightline meets crazy, retarded camp full of children. That's the best you can do. I used to watch Space Ghost when I was a kid, man. I watched him the first time around. Woo! Space Ghost is a superhero from 1966. I'm mysterious. And now he's a talk show host, and he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, and how about my generous biceps? I am the man. Zorak is a six-foot-tall praying mantis. Say something stupid. He is supposed to be there to be Space Ghost Yes Man for whenever Space Ghost has a joke he's supposed to laugh at it but he doesn't because he hates him. Nuts to that action. It is a pleasure to work for someone so good. Thank you Moltar. Moltar is the director. What? Space Ghost. The guest is here. Master, I offer unto thee TV's Colin Quinn. Joke on. Prepare to bask in my greatness. They had an idea for a Space Ghost Marathon, and I think a light bulb went up in Mike's head and said, the goofiest thing in the world would be a talk show uh, with this outer space guy. Where are you going to get the money for all that? So I edited a little, little thingy together, and uh, he sold it to the network. This is the worst show. You know it. I know it. Zorak know it. Which shocked us because it was immediately popular with crazy people. Stupid viewers, you'll watch anything. I can't tell you what an intense thrill it is to be on your show. I... Sure you could. There are some people who just didn't get it. Oh, I see what you're doing. Paul Westerberg na, 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 na. was one. Why do we always hurt the ones we love? I don't think he fully grasped what we were trying to do. He's got a small brain. Dave was interviewing him. Who? And. Dave said something like, what if Zorak pelted you with a beautiful tennis ball? What'd he say? I think his words were, uh, f you ass. <laughs> That's enough to get you on this show. I hear at his concert that night, he did a little song called Space Ghost. So, aces. Thank you, stupid idiot. Kind of a badge of uh, honor there, I think. You probably think that's cool. Code of the script, 2.8 AB. The writer producers get together generally every afternoon and run through scripts, uh, talk about new shows, and very often we'll we'll do table reads. You're gonna be coding Space Ghost, Zarek Moltar. You're gonna be doing the music and effects, Dave reading direction, uh, Matt sound effects. And it's usually just the writers and producers, and we all play different parts and and read it. We're space monsters, Conan, not actors. Yeah, yeah. See him over there? Monster. Where? Where's the monster? We use those meetings to decide, you know, this line sh should change, this, this segment really doesn't work. Where's the damn camera? No, that is now you're- That's on my now you're there. Confused. Where's the damn camera? Exactly. Yeah. It should be on, more of it. This is the best show ever. When you're really ready to get real, you've got my number. Birdman, Attorney at Law is probably the, the one show that's really gonna connect, I think, with, a, with maybe a mainstream audience. If you're a cartoon and you're in trouble, that is gonna be home real soon. You go to this man. You do it, Brian! Hell, Birdman! Fellas, Harvey Birdman is literally uh, Perry Mason with wings. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we all live through the 70s. He tries uh, cases that tend to skew towards cartoon litigation. Your night in the pokey never killed anyone. Builds character. One of the wonderful things about Harvey Birdman is you can bring in a Fred Flintstone and a Yogi Bear and have it make perfect sense. Now, Harv, I'm counting on you. I'd hate to think what could happen if you couldn't get me out of here. Huh. Wonder what that means. Oh!
Michael O'Lean and Eric Richter had the idea of taking this kind of bankrupt Hanna-Barbera character. Look at me. I'm a wreck. And giving him new life. Ah. Much better. Harvey Berman, attorney at law, is a superhero from the from the late '60s who has had to go and become a lawyer. Making him much more interesting now, as a, as a lawyer, than he was as a superhero. I've got two lives in my hands here, two souls dependent on me, giving the performance of my life tomorrow in that courtroom. Sketch? Hell yeah! Let's get Stinko. Who is the man in the suit? Eric went into a booth and sang the theme song. Do you? Through the tape on Lasso's desk. The boss, Michael O'Lean and Eric Richter, came to me with a cassette tape of the Harvey Birdman theme, and I'm like, that's fantastic. Uh, let's make that. Meet your new attorney, Mr. Birdman. We didn't know what the show was or anything, but the theme song had to be televised. Harvey Attorney, habeas corpus, Harvey Attorney, Harvey Birdman, attorney at last. Ended up teaming up with J.J. Sotomayor, which was a perfect pairing of sensibilities. The job, it's yours. Congratulations. Well, gosh, that's great. Do I get a gun? Sure. After having Eric's track to listen to for inspiration, it was really pretty easy to put together something. I'll take the case. We've all watched old cartoons, and we tend to look at them ironically. Woke up this morning, you got yourself. And perhaps... Uh, it's within the realm to think that they would sue one another. Wouldn't it be safe to say that your husband perhaps thought he was a mob boss but really wasn't? We wanted to use cases that people could relate to. The guy's a pig, a Neanderthal. You're dead to me, can't open it! One of the first ones we did was Shaggy Busted. Shaggy and Scooby were arrested. It was awful. Shaggy and Scooby uh, get busted for possession. <gasps> Listen, we've got a bit of a problem, the gang and I. I know. One of your homies took one in the bobo. Everyone has looked back at these cartoons and gone, wait a minute. <laughs> what are they doing in that van? Scooby and Shaggy are always giggling. They're always eating a lot. It just dawned on me, Scooby, Doofy. <laughs> we figured it, it was our moral responsibility to just put it out there once and for all and put them on trial for this. Which one of you is Shaggy? Like I am. Okay, that's your street name. What's the name your mom's gave you? Harvey Birdman has to get them off of, get them to cop a plea. Oh, I would have succeeded too if it hadn't been for those These meddling kids. I've decided to let my tape do the talking. Hesh wants some sex. Hesh, get off. My tape's Shut up. playing. Debbie, get down here. Give Hesh some sex. Hesh, this isn't funny. Be real funny when I crack you with a pipe. Sea Lab is about all these crazy people underwater. Hey, you got any ideas that don't suck? Nice and twisted. Sweet. These guys have to be on drugs. Yeah, well, he better keep his flippers off my stash. Hush, my little babies. It's time to learn. Matt Thompson and I were PAs at Cartoon Network. But at first, they seemed nice. The getting coffee level of work. Not in a bad way. We had to clean out the tape library. It's the safest place. And there were thousands of shows in there that nobody was ever going to see. Oh, this ought to be great. We took an old episode of C-Lab 2020, which is one of the worst cartoons ever produced, and we wrote new dialogue. I get it. We proudly gave it to the executives and said, this is your new hit. Then they said, boy, I hate it. That's crap. Damn, what, we just hire the writers from Suddenly Susan? It's stupid. We said, yes, there is indeed a show here, uh, but it needs to be a funny show, and this isn't. Hating it. You've got to save my little baby. So they left and came back several years later with the funny version. Who's your number one buddy, huh? Huh? C-Lab 2021 is probably the most ensemble show of all the shows that we air. It's just us three and the fat kid. Captain Murphy. Hello, my name is Mr. Squeaky. Barely alive mentally. Is there ever a bad time for pudding? Dr. Quinn is the, uh, the brains of C-Lab. I got PhDs in four scientific disciplines. Really? Why do you think they call me Dr. Quinn? I just thought that was a nickname. You know, like... Dr. Drape, East Side. Stormy is uh, pretty much just uh, a good head of hair in a wetsuit. Hey, shut your hat. Marco, he was kind of a, just a generic 
good looking guy. How you been? We're watching the pilot over and over, and Lazo said, You know, you'd be smart. Make that guy Latino. Emerging market. So we thought, yeah, why not? Who's the most famous Latino we can think of? The Latinator! So then we just called Eric Destrada. He said yes. Untie me, you bastards! Sparks, uh, evil mastermind. God, you're stupid. Hesh was like uh, Captain Murphy's alter ego. Hesh! I want to pull your legs off! He has the most grating voice of all of our programming, and we love that. I'm going to take all your eggs off Hesh. with all Hesh's finger! Debbie is probably the worst written for character in the history of television. Do you want the mustache on or off? Off, please. She's just, you know. Look at these! They're jiggling, baby! Oh, yeah! One of the things that we had said is write an episode uh, that's female-oriented. I gotta have a baby. Chick mate, uh, Debbie's biological clock goes off. There's probably nothing better than a young man addressing the topic of uh, a, a lady's biological clock, because I believe there's a lot of insight there uh, that Adam probably brought to the show uh, in a very wrong-headed manner. Mother Nature has spoken, and I want to have a baby. She basically auditions the uh, male crew members. Screening process starts tomorrow, bright and early. Marco strips down to a Speedo, and he's grotesquely muscular. I got this one. Ooh. Ew. Nice back knee. Sparks wanted to, to have a baby with her so they could eat it. Like veal, only babies. What? And I'm talking real baby back ribs. Dr. Quinn was close because he's uh, he's really intelligent. She finds that sexy. Double encoded <laughs> DNA scan. Oh. You like that? Oh, yeah, doctor. Hesh would just scream. Hesh wants some sex. Over and over. What was I thinking? Look at you. Did you think I was actually going to let one of you father my baby? Turns out they're uh, bizarro. Well, the Bizarro episode of Sea Lab is probably my favorite. Oh, sweet God! Bizarro! We just stared in disbelief um, at how annoying all the Bizarro characters were. Bizarro! I hate the Bizarros. And therefore, uh, genius to us. Bizarro! 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 They're all messed up clones of the regular crew. They wear black wetsuits, they don't have eyebrows, and they're mutated horribly. Bizarro, I love you. Bizarro, I love you. Hey, who's Bizarro, got a peanut for turtle face? I love you, turtle face. I'm helping. I'm helping you. It's just fluff TV, man. Shut up. We wanted to get some scary, hardcore rap. My name is... Which animated characters do I find sexually attractive? Smurfette looked like she could use a good Smurfette. Oh, that's disgusting. Number one in the hood, G. The Aqua Teen Hunger Force is just three fast food guys hanging out in a rental house in New Jersey. Sometimes you have to rent a room instead of work. And then I wait for the, what are you talking about, to start explaining it more to them. I want to know what the hell is going on here. Sales has often asked me to describe the show, and I'm simply unable to. Isn't that something to be very proud of? I used to say that it was like Three's Company on acid. Yeah, man, he took his brain out. It's cool. There's nothing quite like it on television. This is crap! Except Dateline. Oh, really? How the hell did this happen? The Aqua Teen Origins were actually a Space Ghost script uh, that I felt was hijacked by these crazy characters. They're just playing, they're just having fun. It was so Aqua Teen heavy that Mike didn't feel like there was enough Space Ghost in it. So we rejected it. No, no, no way I, in I the world, no way on Earth! They wouldn't let it go. And <laughs> we thought, Let's take these Aqua Teen characters and make a show with them. And they just keep coming! Came back a year later and said, now we want to make that silly Aqua Teen show, and I was, whatever. What kind of attitude is that? Master Shake is a giant milkshake uh, who is probably the biggest ass uh, ever. Well, you should have a brain that's just a cavity that keeps you afloat. He's self-centered. He's uh, glory hungry. Oh, Throw it, Pee-wee, I heard it all before. He's just an ass Yes, I was thinking that. 
He doesn't have any kind of superpowers. He's, he just runs his mouth. You heard him! And he always has the wrong idea. The Highlander was a documentary, and the events happened in real time. Frylock is the only one that has any level of competence whatsoever. Flip him over. <laughs> That's how Hendrix died. Frylock is what holds the show together. He's a box of french fries, and he hovers. My Frydar is picking up some very small brain activity. Meatwad is, uh, I should know, shouldn't I? Of a meatball. 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 All right, listen up. Meat wad is a raw piece of meat. If he were cooked, he'd be a meatball. A grill in the mouth. Who sounds like this? Let's go get some cat fish. Carl, hey! Good morning, Carl. Yeah, it is a good morning there, little man. Carl's, you know, is a bachelor, kind of a classic rock dude. I am going down to the store and get a hot rod magazine. Unfortunately, lives next to these uh, bizarre creatures. So I put two and two together there, hey, and decided that you're pissing me off. Carl's interests are girls, cars, and beer. While we're on the topic, he likes escort services, and he likes internet porn. And he does not like the Aqua Teens very much. Yeah! Badass Camaro! Yeah. yeah. I love that theme song. My name is... Sheikh Zula, the mic ruler, the most ruler. Sheikh Zula, the mic ruler, says it all. We wanted to get some scary, hardcore rap that any white person in America would just be frightened and have to leave the room. And Lazo said, Schooly D, get him. Dave and I flew up there and it was just like magic watching him work. I don't know that he wrote those lyrics more than five minutes before we did the record. We were just like floored. I cannot hear the song enough. I saw my fingers and my toes and I'm a toys. Uh, check, check it. Yeah. That's Matt, Malera, and myself singing and singing back up with him. We're the ones in the background going. Cause we are the aqua teens. Make the homies stay home. Make the girls want to scream. And hear Matt faintly go, yeah. <laughs> like the white person he is. Cause we are the aqua teens. Totally gets right up in your grill. Number one in the hood, G. 